you rolling in the sewer. <laughs> After staying at our last Airbnb, this one is of no note. It is extremely typical and nothing special. But in the hallway, two things. Number one, the tile. Is anyone else seeing lunch meat? Like, like that salami, like that, that meatloaf lunch meat. Like this really just looks <laughs> edible and weird, like weird edible. And as you go down the stairs, there is no rail. So say you trip here, you be going down and down and down and down. This is terrifying. <laughs> I almost fell. <laughs> The further south that you come in Croatia, the more and more tourism there is going to be. Friends! <laughs> um, we are actually standing outside one of the gates in Split to the Old Town. And the Old Town has four gates. Each one is named after a metal. So there's the Golden Gate, which you can see here. There is the bronze gate, the silver gate, and the iron gate. We're gonna go into the golden gate uh, if we can work our way through our friends. <laughs> From the golden gate, it does not take any time at all until you walk into something where you just go, all right, that's ancient incredibly incredibly ancient and on top of that it doesn't take very long for you to also feel like you're in one of the most touristed places in the world we've got bell fries on top of people eating pizza so it's a very big conglomeration of tourism and things to see but we've also come to the silver gate which isn't very far from the golden gate and right outside there's a huge amount of little shops a huge market where you can buy sarongs People be selling sarongs. <laughs> that is not something I've ever purchased. <laughs> they seem to be all out of hippos. And that's why I came here. I am upset. Let's get out of this hippo list market and go back inside. Going up another thing, pretty steep, watching my head. The city of Split is a fairly large city in Croatia. I believe it's the second largest city in all of Croatia, and it is the largest city in the region of Dalmatian, which is a region that covers the southern half of Croatia and runs along the Adriatic Sea. And uh, this is like the capital kind of area of the uh, area of Dalmatian. And you're probably hearing this word Dalmatian and you're being like, okay, Dalmatian, like the dog? And you're thinking the same thing we thought, Dalmatian, like the dog? And we ain't seen no Dalmatians, we ain't seen no spotted dogs. But we've been looking for them now because I looked it up on Wikipedia last night to verify, is it just a coincidence or this is this actually where these dogs are from? And it's actually where these dogs are from. So pretty excited, hopefully, to find one of these dogs eventually. But anyway, back to Split. Um, it's a pretty large urban area and there is a lot going on. There's like shipping and things and trade and all that goes on here. But a major draw to Split is tourism. And we are seeing that pretty heavy today and we're not even into the heavy tourist season. It's just beginning to start ramping up right now. So I can't imagine how packed this place must get once that is in its like full swing. But um, it's, it's, you're still like rubbing elbows with people as you're walking around even now. And the reason that there's a huge tourist draw here is not only is the location really good and the weather is really nice, but it has a palace that was built back by a Roman emperor way, way back in the day. And the palace is situated right on the ocean. And the reason that it's sitting here is essentially because that Roman dude really wanted to have a nice summer palace. So he found a place for a pretty good looking view from his summer palace. So way back during those times, they built this up 
and it was built in the way that um, old school cities were built. So uh, it's broken into quarters. There's two main streets that run through it, and then there's four sections that work around it, and it's built in like a square. So there is a set of city walls that runs around the outside, and that's where those gates that Katie had talked about are sitting on the outside for access. And one side of it just butts right up against the ocean. So they could have access for boats and things like that coming in, probably from Italy, where Roman dude is from. So, um, over the years, the Roman Empire had its difficulties, etc., and the palace had changed hands many times. And basically, like everybody in this southern area of Europe has owned or been in charge of this palace or the area of split in general. Uh, it's just, I just looked at the Wikipedia, I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to be able to regurgitate this. And I was just like, okay, well, these people had it, and then these people had it, and these people had it, and then these people had it, and it just goes back and forth so many times. Um, the most interesting power shift that took place, though, is at one point there was a small town that was nearby here, and the small town was being attacked by another group of people, and the people from the small town came to the palace and, like, just came here for refuge, and they essentially didn't leave, and their descendants are still living inside of the palace walls, which is still operating like a normal place. Like it's got, um, it's got people like life stuff is going on here. Like there's still normal things that are happening that, you know, these people need to live. But a majority of it seems to be driven by the tourist industry. Lots of hotels, lots of tourists, like places to have coffee, lots of tourist restaurants and things like that. And I think that a majority of the industry and stuff that's happening in Split these days is on the outside of the walls where the rest of the city has expanded after a claustrophobic set of stairs, and then a very revealing set of stairs where if you're wearing a skirt, today is not commando day for you. Wow, it was... Some people who are into some certain things could have had a good time on those stairs, but you know, I kept it, I kept it private for others and for myself. I wore pants today. <laughs> I, not that I knew that I should wear pants, but I did. Um, yeah, we got up to the top of this bell tower, which looks amazing from the outside, but the view is also equally amazing. But we're not even in the to high tourist season, and there were tons of people. It felt quite crowded. I can't imagine when high tourism season from like May, which is next week, May to <laughs> September starts. Like when the real summer months get here and people want to go swimming and stuff, they're going to be swimming in here. There's just not going to be any room, but at least there's a little room today, and we can enjoy a half touristed <laughs> bell tower. It's Romans man, they weren't very tall. <laughs> Just outside of the bell tower is one of the things that I really wanted to see, which is the Black Sphinx that is amazing looking and was brought from Egypt. It's among many that have been brought here, but I don't know, I was really excited to see it. And we've gone kind of mapless today, so when I saw it out of the corner of my eyes, I found like, oh, that's one of the tidbits I wanted to see. And yeah, it's, it, it lived up to the hype in my mind. <laughs> When we were up in the bell tower, we looked down and we saw a really defining building. And it was this big round hole. And we were like, oh, what is that? That looks like we should go to that thing. <laughs> so we came down and we came to this thing. And when we got here, there was like a group of dudes doing like a vocal performance, like a cappella group singing. And the acoustics in here are super, super good. I'm actually a little bit worried that everybody on the other side of this is hearing me clear as day. <laughs> but a big crowd had gathered and they've got like an act where they get people to come and take pictures with them while they're singing and like they've got this good personality about the whole group and everything. And then when they're done with the song, they have a bunch of CDs that they sell and they hold up signs like they're selling CDs. And then they wait for that group to dissipate and then I guess they probably know the timing of like when tourist groups and stuff are coming through with like, you know, the buses arriving and everything. And they're just like kind of milling around waiting now and I'm sure another group is gonna come, they're gonna do another performance and that's their gig. But uh, yeah, I mean, they found something that's pretty unique and apparently this is Dalmatian style music. I have no idea what that is, but it sounds pretty nice. <laughs> Thank you.
getting kind of hungry. Getting kind of excited about food. So we're planning out how we're gonna get to where we want to eat lunch. And Google Maps has said that where we're going is gonna take five minutes by foot. Keep in mind, we are in the, the old town. Like, we haven't seen cars for a while, and it still says 20 minutes by car. How the crap, what? Bam! You're gonna have to go all the way around the city if you wanna to try to get to that restaurant from here. When we shoot uh, videos, we don't ridiculously go out of our way to keep people from being in the videos that don't want to be in the videos, but we try to be conscious of like people around us and if they don't want to be in the shot or whatever and you know things like that. But when you get into situations where there's this many people with cameras out, like all trying to take pictures of the same thing you're trying to take pictures of, you just kind of got to throw it all out the window and just be like, I hope nobody in this crowd's picking their nose. <laughs> We followed the walking route instead of the driving route and we got to some food. We're trying something that we've actually had already uh, before and, and the when reason... When we had it, it was yeah. really low cal. I cannot believe that she lady served, it, served to us. it to us the way she so, did. So yeah, when we were on this road trip into the, the eastern side of Croatia, when, I don't know, like two weeks ago or something now, we just stopped at a random place and saw a random picture and we were like, give us that thing and it was like little sausages on bread and we were like, okay, we had no idea that this was kind of a popular food here and I've since had a lot of people on social media and stuff be like, you gotta get this stuff, it's really good, and, it's and really good. we have good. no idea how to pronounce we this don't know. the man that I bought it from, he a dog like Yeah, we, there was no no way that I was going to understand <laughs> what he said. Like his pronunciation um, was really rough. So, Savapchi? So. I don't know. It's so a sa she? sausage hamburger. Sausage sandwich is kind of what they've been translating yeah. it as. Got our and, little sausages. Um, the last time we had this, the lady just brought it out dry. It was just like sausages and on bread. I asked for and you the asked sauce, for a red sauce, and she brought us ketchup. I recently have found out is uh, Ajvar, and I almost bought it from the store because it looks so tasty in the jar. I was like, mmm, that looks really good. I want to eat a lot of that. Do you know what's made um, of? It's uh, red bell peppers, and then they put like garlic and eggplant and chili peppers if they want to heat it up and make it a little fiery. Okay. So this sauce is, I'm so excited about it. I'm, I'm in it for the sauce. I'm not in it for the sausage. Oh, well, I'm in it for the bread too. <laughs> bread. Oh, I've been like hunting out this bread. I couldn't find it the other night and I just gave up. I was like, I will not eat any food. I'm just gonna eat vegetables because I cannot find this bread. And the place that we found is a little bit outside of the, um, the palace area. So you step out and of course like 20 meters and you're basically outside of the tourist area. And this little place is like packed full of local people like standing and they're drinking wine and some of the people know the dude that's working there. It's very obvious. And there's just like a constant stream of people going in there to get food. So I think that we found some place that has got like a like a pretty good reputation mm -hmm. even with the local people that are living oh, yeah. around here and we're eating a food that's essentially a local food so I'm kind of like I think we've, we, we've nailed this one down yeah so uh, and I'm so happy because we were really searching it out in Zadar like making it a focus yeah. and then I typed it in and this was the first thing that came up and I was like I'm so glad we didn't do it in Zadar because yeah. I have a feeling this might be one of the best ones in the country and he asked like what do you want on it and you just told him everything and we know that included onions cheese, cheese and tomatoes the, tomatoes, the sauce yeah. the it, sausage, he spoke English yeah. to us but his, his his accent was just really thick so yeah okay that oh. looks uh, hold on let me get up in there with the camera yeah dude I'm so excited well, don't be excited no more. Have a bite. Get that zoom over there. Move it out of that. Yeah, I got a pan. I got a crane thing going on with the camera. <laughs> Is it better than the, the one we had from the lady who just put ketchup on it? <laughs> it's better than the ketchup one that I have, uh, that I had. I also had another one that I didn't get the traditional sausage. I got shish which is like shish kebab meat, yeah. which I think is a little spicier than the sausage they have in here. And I got clotted cheese with that instead of the red sauce. Red sauce beats them all. You should always have red sauce. Is um, it spicy? It looks super spicy. It is not spicy. What you're seeing, that skin is not peppers. It is the skin, or it's not chili peppers. It's the skin of the red bell pepper. Mm, okay. So it is not super spicy by any means um, to the point that the onion is sticking out more. The onion oh, is having more zing than the sauce. How is the sausage? Is there any like, strong flavor of the sausage or anything like that? I've, I've noticed that the sausages are pretty subdued. Like they aren't like spicy morning sausage. They aren't like shish kebab or kebab type flavors yeah. it's just like a ground meat that is lightly seasoned okay um cheese i haven't even gotten into that i don't know where that exists <laughs> it's somewhere it might be like melted cheese i don't oh. know oh it's the clotted cheese there we go you see it right there 
it's going to be kind of like a cottage cheese. So I think you will feel like you aren't interested in that, but boy, you're going to be wrong. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I'm going to eat this now. I think I'm done. Done. I want to eat this. I'm trying to have a love affair. Just got to keep it rolling. We got to close the windows. <laughs> You know, every once in a while we stumble across something that's like the street food that is like known, that re region is known for. And we've got this little place in Tokyo that makes these amazing rice balls, these onigiri that are just like stunning. And I always go back to this place we found in Egypt that makes this stuff called kushiri, kushiri, something like that. And it was just like this dish that was incredible. And this is damn good. Yep. The, the way that they've made this is... <laughs> like shockingly delicious. Mm -hmm. And I think the sausage actually is like the standout part. I, I, the sauce is okay, but the sausage really stands out for me. And just like the texture of it and the, just every bit about how it tastes and everything I think is really good. Bread and sauce for me. And not the, that the sausage is bad, it's just uh, not what I'm used to. So it hasn't charmed me yet. Mm, but, and like, also like you said, the bread. And it's like, I don't know if it's buttered exactly, but they, it's definitely got like a, a, a moisture to it that is just like really, really good. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm a little bit sad that we haven't been exploring these during our been. time in Croatia. You just haven't been able to find them. Is that what it is? I've found them in meals that we haven't eaten together. This is what I've been doing. <laughs> just, what is this? <laughs> I took you to that place and you said, I'm pretty sure I can't eat that before I get on the bus. And then you ate uh, somewhere else. This yeah, is that, what place, I ate. that place looked a little bit like, that looked like I might, yeah, the, the bus didn't have a bathroom. They didn't have red sauce, so <laughs> bad news. Dude, this thing's called Chivaptiji. <laughs> Just watched on YouTube that somebody pronounced it. Like, this is the coolest name for a fast food. Taco is pretty cool, but. S say it again? Chivaptiji. That is really difficult. Chivaptiji. Chivaptiji. Yeah, so That's it's a really bad. fun way to say it. You, well, it's the only way to say it. So you can impress really some people with ordering it next time? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> what if, like, you saw in the sky was a cloud that was unmistakably a rooster? Do you get that one? Can you say nice cock? Like nice cloud cock? Does it count? Because <laughs> it like what? It, this looks like a rooster to me. I see it. That's not a nice cock, dude. Mm, okay. It is a nice sandwich. Yeah, we're standing outside of a pharmacy here and uh, Got these big, huge boxes of like an advertisement for some medicine, I guess, because like, you know, pharmacy. And uh, we can't read any of it, of course. But the design like of this thing, I looked at it at first and I was like, oh, it's like a tree or something. And uh, there's a little car coming. <laughs> but then I got looking at it even more and I was like, I think that's like intestines. And like, so that would be like the exit point. And then we got the squirrely ass worm, like busting out the bottom. Whoa. I'm a little worried about drinking the water here all of a sudden because like I don't need that guy inv in infecting this guy. <laughs> With tourism brings shops that tourists would go into and we're pretty good about avoiding most of these shops but this one got me to roll in there because there's this lady that's got this gigantic barrel full of candy bananas and it's not like little candy bananas it's like legit kitty like real size legit bananas so i couldn't stop myself from getting one because if there's one thing that tempts me it's a banana and uh i was kind of surprised to see that it's actually a bit hard like there's not any flex taking place at all here and it's just like an outer coating i'm sure it's just sugar with sugar and sugar with a little bit of yellow it smells like nothing it <laughs> All right, well, it kind of tastes like that fake banana flavor. It's apparently what bananas used to taste like before like an extension took place and then, I don't know. But it's like that fake banana candy flavor. It's pretty good. Uh, the inside is like a marshmallowy stuff, like a fluff, but it's not soft. Uh, it's like a circus peanut. That's really, that's what I'm eating. I'm, I'm eating a banana flavored, gigantic yellow Croatian circus peanut. I'm okay with it. On the north side, there is the Golden Gate. 
On the east side, there's the silver gate. On the south side, you've got the bronze gate or the brass gate. I recently just read that. I think it's bronze, but somebody wrote brass somewhere. Got me thinking about that. On the west side, you've got the iron gate. And the west side's actually been expanded quite a lot. There's a lot of addition to it past the city wall. And it all kind of blends in. So I think we're looking at the Iron Gate, but I'm not sure. And there's absolutely no signage here, which infuriates me. But that might mean that that's not it. So then there wouldn't be signage here. But since they've expanded the city, it's all kind of just blended in. And that's... Where's this gate? <laughs> what, what? Street view trusted. <laughs> We've come into the substructures of the palace area and we've got this lovely diagram. I'm gonna show you a little bit more about what we talked about before, how this is the, the, the way the palace would have looked like back in Roman days. And you've got it split into these four pieces. And this area near the sea would have been where the emperor would have had his living quarters. And then this area was where all the servants and the uh, military and stuff would have been stationed and everything. And um, so we're in the substructures which happen to sit underneath this area. And what this was is it was basically a foundation to keep the emperor's living quarters lifted up higher than the sea level. And um, the way that they had to go about doing that was building these huge rooms with these giant arches on the top, like Roman style arches, cause like they're super end arches. And that helps hold up all the weight of all the living quarters and everything. And this whole area over the years that the emperor had lived in has been destroyed over all the different handing back and forth between different peoples and battles and just renovations and changes people had made to this entire construction area to make it suitable for their own living. So this area doesn't exist anymore, essentially. But the substructures that we're inside of right now, which are basically an underground labyrinth, are an exact mirror of the way that the layout of the emperor's living quarters would have been. So each room was built exactly the same below, and then they built another one identically on top of it. The reason I guess they did that was because that's the way to make it structurally sound, but it's turned into a thing where nowadays, since we can't study something that doesn't exist anymore, it's really easy for people to understand how things were built back then because they can see the exact floor plan of what existed. It's just kind of phenomenal to look at because these are not small rooms, they're huge. The ceilings are super high. They have these huge columns and the archways are really, really big. So just the, the thought of being able to construct something like this without modern technology, like it's just another one of these things that you just look at and you're like, I don't even know like how to begin by doing this without like a backhoe. <laughs> um, this area was actually as well full of trash and sewage from the Middle Ages when they just started like, I guess, pouring their sewage down here and just like trash and blah, blah, blah. And it was like full and it was not, um, it was not accessible by foot or anything until I believe like the 1950s when they started excavating this whole thing and bringing the ground level back down and uh, doing uh, like exploration, I mean, archeology span and stuff to learn about this whole structure and like discovering all the treasures it has. And one of those being this substructure area that we're inside of right now so this is all like just been like hidden away for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and in a sense that sort of preserved it because like everything else has changed up above but under here I mean it was a sewage ain't nobody coming down here for any reason until they had one in the 1950s when I guess people started getting curious all right we're gonna geek out a little bit Game of Thrones um, Split and lots of places in Croatia like Dubrovnik are big filming areas for this movie and I'm up to date on it. Love it. Can't wait for the final season. So you know where we're coming down here um, and we have geeked out very hard we've got our picture up we're trying to figure out oh where did it happen where is it you know and i'm like i think it's over here and eric's like let's get this picture eric doesn't even watch this show but we're we are detectives <laughs> dragon detectives apparently this uh place is the holding area for darnerius's 
dragons in Marine. So one of my favorite scenes is when Tyrion comes down and he talks to the dragons and I really just thought we were gonna have like a dwarf barbecue. Like that's <laughs> really what I thought was gonna happen. Everybody knew, everybody thought that was gonna happen. So here are the reasons why we thought that it was this room. Um, over here, the angles of these brown spots matching this brown spot on the wall over here. That was where we started. But outside of that, there were many other reasons that we saw like, oh yeah, that looks like this and that looks like this. And we're standing where dragons have never been. I may not watch Game of Thrones, but um, at least I know it's not a movie. <laughs> Think they're into me? They look so sleepy I might be able to sneak up on them. <laughs> you gotta take it slow. Gain their trust. Hi Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not into me. He didn't engage the pointy bits though, so it was not that bad. <laughs> he certainly did. Hi. Kitty, kitty, kitty. What's the word? What do you say? Dodgy. Dodgy? Can you speak Korean? This is going better. <laughs> Not from my point of view. I'm trying to watch you fight that cat. <laughs> that cat told you you're out of your mind. <laughs> this is a different area of the underground substructure that they have excavated. And it has quite a different feel. And I, I'll be real, like, I learned uh, all the stuff I said earlier on signs that I read in the other area, but this area doesn't really have any signage. So I don't really know what you we're looking at. You make your own story as you, you go. Yeah, and apparently. In this side, cats <laughs> rule the world and they <laughs> bitch slap you all the time. What's it gonna be in song format? Dude, you gotta slow down that cat bitch slapping you for the song. <laughs> um, but this this area, uh, I assume it had buildings on top of it as well, but now they've just left it open so you can just see into the sky. And they've got little artifacts like uh, this. And I don't know, is that does that look like a place a dead guy was? It looks like a bathtub to me. Yeah, a bathtub or sarcophagus. Do we bury people in what looks like a bathtub? Yes, yeah, we, we kind of bury people in bathtubs. But there, did, you, bathtubs. did you see the, sar the sarcophagus on the other side? Yeah, like I there did. was legitimately mm -hmm. one. It said it was from the Middle Ages, so mm -hmm. it wasn't like Roman aged. But I guess somebody like flushed it with all the other stuff they put down there in this yeah. <laughs> during the Middle Ages. I told you the cats rule this side. <laughs> We're actually still in the uh, the, the substructure. substructure area, and it's just like like tourist souvenirs and stuff that they've got going yep. on down here. Some so guys like, doing paintings, some other ladies <laughs> doing jewelry. What's up with potpourri? Yeah, potpourri must be a thing from this area because we keep seeing people selling it. <gasps> nice cocktail. Ah. Now we're on the hunt for a banana split in split. Wish us luck. Apparently the banana I had earlier wasn't good enough. So it wasn't me. even a banana. It was a circus <laughs> peanut dressed as a banana. <laughs> In this size, cats rule the world and they bitch slap you all the time. <laughs> what's, it gonna be in, what's it gonna be in song format? Walnuts, figs, raisins, buttercream. Walnuts, figs, raisins, buttercream. That's what's inside this. <laughs> so like, uh, we went looking for a banana split and I don't think that I mean, we, we didn't check like all over the city We asked we asked the information girl and she was like, oh, yeah, you can go over here and we checked that place and they didn't have banana splits They had bananas. Yeah. They had ice cream. They had bowls, but they couldn't make a banana split. Maybe and they I, don't have whipped cream I don't know. I mean, did you really? My heart okay. You need the whipped cream. You yeah, you're right, yourself, you're right. What, what is the standard? You at least have to have whipped cream and sauce and those are two things I didn't see that they had. So maybe they weren't prepared But what I'm saying is that we're in a town called split and there's an ice cream shop every 10 feet, you'd think somebody would be capitalizing on this by now. Yeah, like, yeah, let's go. You want banana split and split? Yeah, we'll get it done, you know what I mean? We are going to find one, but it'll be tomorrow. Okay? Maybe, so, well, I hope so, man. Um, information girl who's answered all my questions today, which I've asked her a lot, um, she gave us another place which I had randomly on my radar called Luca's Ice Cream or something. Mm. We've come to Luca's Ice Cream and gotten some cake. Yeah. And what's in it? 
walnuts, figs, raisins, and buttercream. All right. And it's got the, it's got the whipped cream that you were hoping for. So this place has ice cream. They've got, I didn't see bananas, they have oranges. We asked if they made banana and splits. They definitely they also said no. What are we doing what? this to? To finding banana splits tomorrow. <laughs> but this place is, um, I'm sorry. I, for me, it's cake over ice cream. Yeah? Yeah. Is that the world I mean, you're in now? I mean, it might depend on the temperature. If it's really, really, really hot, I might change my mind, but I like a forkable. Thing. Oh, you do have a fork. I just got screwed in that spoon. Yeah. What do you think not. of the cake? Quite good. That's I, all right. I feel like it's got a uh, a hardiness to it mm -hmm. with the walnuts and the actual fruits. And I've kind of been missing raisins. We had a bag of raisins for like a month, and it was like every every day were, I'd have a few raisins. Those, oh yeah, we did happy. have raisins. They were. I thought we had. Um, what are those things called in, the, in the England? English raisins. Currants. Currants. Yeah. And those were like. Bad raisins. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of in the direction of like a um, like carrot a carrot cake. A carrot cake. Yeah. yeah, it's all right. I saw it on um, Google Images and I was like, oh, it looks really good. And I'm glad I'm, that's what I'm eating right now. Banana split tomorrow. We will find a split in split. I promise. <laughs> Otherwise, we're gonna have to go to the supermarket. I'll make one myself. Yep. Yeah. The whole time we had the car rented and we were driving around Croatia, I kept seeing this sign. And every time I saw it, I know it's trying to say like, you know, there's going to be kids maybe running into the road or whatever. But I'm like, that kid's running from a bad man. <laughs> we're walking out of the central area of the old town of Split and we're going up through this little residential area. And there are cars on cars on cars parked along the sides of the road. And <laughs> they're basically just on the sidewalk, like straight up. There's no way for a person to walk down there and you can see it's going up both directions So like if you want to walk here like you're walking down the middle of the road So it's a little bit like well, there's sidewalks, but why? Got a little late start this morning and I was totally excited about coming up here to where we're standing right now Just this overlook of split and we wanted to go when we got to the old town, but it was hot Days have gotten hot around 11 to 4. I don't really want to know where the sun is I want to be hiding from it. So we've waited until the sun's kind of gone away and The temperature is perfect and we're standing up here staring at the bell tower that we were in earlier I doubt people are in it, but a bell that was crazy sounding over here went off Hopefully no one was in there because they're probably either really deaf now or possibly physically injured I don't know the view from up here is astounding. Split is gorgeous, not only just for the old town city and also like out on the river. This is not a river. This is not a river. <laughs> um, out on the water as well. But what's actually drawn my eye so much is the mountains in the background. We were talking about Nintendo putting in like that, that background layer, that third layer for like depth and feel. That's what it feels like. It's just kind of been put there, but it's really there. <laughs> And uh, I just, I love that it's kind of hazy and you feel like you couldn't touch it ever. You just keep driving towards and it just keep moving away and away and away. <laughs> I think it's possible we're staying in this building. We've walked from the overview and came to this amazing map. From the overview point over here, down the waterfront, over to what's called the Riva, which is just kind of like a people watching area. Lots of tourist things going on. And we've come to the last gate of the day, which is the bronze or brass gate. I'm gonna go with bronze, cause that's just feeling more badass. And we are gonna go into the bronze gate, walk through the city, and we're gonna go to dinner somewhere over there. The bronze gate actually goes into the substructures that we were in earlier, and it's the only one that has a door that I think we paid attention to. I didn't really check the other ones, but now we're kind of in a weird way in a circle. We've been to a lot of it today. We've had not very much choice in food lately. We've noticed that a lot of it is big platters of meat, which we normally, we're not vegetarians by any means, but we don't necessarily eat meat all the time. And a big staple of Croatian food is a giant barbecue platter. Um, 
Aside from that, what you'll find um, are pasta, pizza, and um, fast food. We've been eating a lot of pizza. <laughs> And I don't know if that's just something that's left over from Venice or if it's just that's kind of the best option to us. Uh, but that's what we've been eating a lot of. Today we have gone to a very popular restaurant and I noticed that they have signatures from like celebrities that they've signed the napkins of the restaurant. So I'm kind of getting the feeling this is known by people throughout Croatia, this restaurant that we're at. Um, we picked it because it's popular on Google and the food actually looked like it was more than just the barbecue plate. Um, I came, I showed him a picture from Google. He was like, we don't have that tonight, but we do have deer ragu. Say what? what? Okay. And that's what I have. Um, so on this side is deer ragu and then this is polenta on the side. Not a big deer eater, nor a ragu eater nor polenta eater. This is all something like new well, and exciting. Literally all you eat is pizza, so <laughs> It is true, pizza and salad. We, we did get a salad as well. Um, meat has a texture of liver. It kind of breaks away in your mouth like that. You don't look happy. You wouldn't be happy. I'm happy. It doesn't have the bitter flavor of, it doesn't have that chalky flavor of um, liver, but it has kind of the breaking, like, uh, where it breaks down, crumbles a bit. The ragu, it looks brown, but it's got a tomatoiness to it. Very well seasoned, very nice. Um, what, what's polenta? Is that like a rice based thing? I, I, I Polenta's thought... like friend of rice. Okay. It probably, I don't know how it grows, but it's not rice, it's just friend of rice. It's good. This is something I could see myself definitely making at home. But notice, this is all meat. If this was like that much meat, and this was like veggies to go with it, I'd be insane about this meal. But the variety is not there in Croatian meals. Um, it's more focused on just kind of one thing. And uh, when you come and you get a dish, I honestly find it's very uh, surprising to get two items. You'll either get pasta on a dish or you'll get one sandwich on a dish. It won't be like in Japan you get multiple little items that kind of give you a flavor of this and a flavor of that or a salad and a main together. Um, so you have to order them separately and that's kind of what I've gathered from Croatian food. <laughs> I went on a little long about that. It seems like every night people gather in the open area underneath the bell tower and we're just doing it our style. We grabbed a pizza, sitting on the sidelines, watching everybody. It seems like it's kind of like wrapped around a coffee shop. It's, you said it was like two and a half times the normal price for coffee. Yes. But you can also just bring a pizza over here and eat it. It's totally fine. Yeah, that's, so. that's freer than <laughs> expensive coffee. Well, I don't know what call it free, but it's a good price. For pizza. <laughs> As we were walking to our Airbnb the first night that we got here, shortly before it, we saw these like kind of mud huts, but they're not mud huts. It's actual concrete that they have put onto the building that goes all the way to the sidewalk. You, you could literally just keep walking right on up those if you wanted to from the sidewalk. So yesterday at a coffee, at a, at a cake shop, I ordered in Americano double. Well, at first I told him I wanted a double Americano and then he repeated my order back to me, including the cake. So it was like cake and then he said Americano and then I just said the word double. And I ended up with two Americanos, like separate, not together. And today I was like, okay, I, I screwed that up. I should have put the double at the beginning. Maybe that like helps people understand. But I said a double espresso today and that got me this. <laughs> So maybe the further south you go, the less they know to put them in the same cup. I don't really know. No problems in Zagreb, no problems in Zadar. Just when you get to split, they're splitting it. <laughs> <laughs> Grabbing some breakfast. And for breakfast, sometimes I like to just like roll over to like a, like a pastry shop or something and get some pastries. 
<laughs> and uh, there was this lady with this little stand in the market and she was like, you know, peddling pastries. So I was like, okay, let's just grab some pastries from this lady. And one of them, I was like, what is that? And she was like, cheese. And I was like, okay, and it's in a pastry. So I was like, let's grab the cheese one. And then I also got a chocolate one. I already ate the chocolate one. It was just a croissant, nothing really that important. But I got this one out and I was like, dab. She like, it was in this bag and then it was inside of this thing wrapped up. Like it's really like, like bagged up, you know, like why? And then I started noticing like how wet it is. And like, I was like, is that grease? I don't, it's like wet. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why. And uh, you open it and the wetness continues and you end up with this thing. And this is very wet. It's a little bit sweet, but I think I'm just getting that because there's chunks of sugar on it. So the, I don't know what the wetness is. And it's cheese inside, I guess, like a big block of cheese. This thing is of a substantial weight. I'm very surprised at this pastry. So I don't know, I've got a block of sugary wet cheese. <laughs> okay. It's heavy. It, it tastes like cheese, it tastes like vaguely like string cheese, kind of, like in that way, but with sugar and really wet. I, I'd get another one, it was all right, it's all right. Meet Gregarious of Nin. This gigantic statue is from a famous artist or sculptor here in Croatia, and I've been waiting to see his work for a while. And now that I've seen it, it's kind of hit me in the face. This guy is pretty amazing. But one of the special things about Gregarious is that if you rub his toe, it's supposed to mean good luck and that you'll come back to split. And we definitely need to come back to split because tomorrow we're gonna take a ferry out to Vis and then we're going to come back to split. So if we don't come back to split, I'd blame it on Gregarious. When you've got buildings that are over 2,000 years old that you aren't willing to just like knock over and rebuild, sometimes you gotta make some like compromises in uh, the way things are gonna be looking just to make sure that they don't fall over on each other. And in this case, it looks like they've taken these wooden structures and placed them between these two buildings because the buildings are coming in together at the top. So I'm assuming that they've decided that instead of having these buildings end up collapsing in on one another, they're just gonna put this wooden structure up and they're gonna keep it like spread apart like this. It's like putting braces on these buildings which just sounds like kind of a, this insane like crazy solution like in any other circumstance you just be like oh we'll just knock down the building and just like rebuild it because it's unsafe but in this case they're just like ah eh, just bring it with some wood the cathedral here in split which is actually part of the bell tower but we got real distracted by the bell tower yesterday so we've come to the cathedral now the cathedral here is one of the oldest cathedrals in the world that functions in its original state so this was built long 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 ago it's still functioning we actually got to hear a little bit of singing in here which you won't get to see because we caught the end of it but we got to hear it and it really does function like i'm assuming the girls that were singing will be singing maybe at some sort of presentation for a religious ceremony or something like that but what is interesting mostly about this place, the age and its shape. I overheard a tour group stealing some knowledge. I overheard the tour group speaking about that most cathedrals are shaped like a cross, but this cathedral is actually shaped octagonally. And that actually makes it feel really, really snug. Like everything feels closer than it normally would. Um, and that means you're going to be very close to the graphic crucifix that we found on the wall. We've come down into the crypts and surprisingly it's much quieter down here than it is in the actual cathedral which is surprising to me. Well, I guess it should be quiet. It should be dead quiet down here. This crypt actually shows another example of that mirror foundation that we saw at the substructures where the crypts down here look exactly the same as the structure in the cathedral above and it's just there to give it a better foundation and more height than it had back in the day. This crypt's actually been dedicated to St. Lucia and we're starting to feel like I don't know if it's a chicken and egg situation. She would be the chicken. So she probably came before us and we're just following her around the world. 
Back when this palace was originally constructed, it had a section of the city that was actually the religious area, and this was one of the buildings that was part of that. It is Jupiter's temple, so it would have been built to the god Jupiter, which <laughs> I can't, like, I don't know, I keep saying these things like, how is that possibly real? But here it is, it is. And inside of it, there is a lot of decoration and things that have been sculpted into the ceiling and things that are like faces and stuff that look like traditionally very Roman, at least to me anyways. And you can see some of it as well along the outside of the door. And it's all like very beautifully done and it's all very well maintained considering the age of it. And considering the fact that even though it was originally constructed as like a Roman thing, once Christianity took over the region, they turned this into a place where baptisms were given. And there are are things inside of it that are now based on Christianity as opposed to being based on its original intention for Jupiter. In fact, I didn't see anything at all in there that was like for Jupiter anymore at all. So I guess that had all been like, you know, gotten rid of and everything. Um, other things of note that are uh, associated with this is this right here, which is another one of the sphinxes that they have in the city. And it is 3,500 years old. And it's just here and you can just pet it. <laughs> As promised, a banana split in split. And you got your chocolate, you've got your vanilla. I think vanilla's in there. It's kind of camouflaged by the whipped cream. This is hazelnut, which actually seems like quite a popular ice cream flavor here. And the ones that I've had in the past have been quite good. And it is quite good. It should be all hazelnut. I'd be fine with that. I'm a little bit surprised at like how hard it was to find a banana split in split. Like they had a little bit of a sign out front here, but a lot of places just don't do any Sunday type ice creams mm. at all. I had to think about that. Oh, okay. And my thought about that was gelato places and the places that do the cone, it's beneath them to bring out the banana. <laughs> that was my thought on that. It really was. But no, but, a just banana, but a banana makes everything classier. They're just wrong. This is like some sort of, sort of cultural difference. Does I'm a not banana gonna make get. everything classier? Yeah, think of any event, add a banana, it's better. <laughs> Can you name any event that's worse with a banana? Not right now, but I might think, I'm gonna have a think about it. <laughs> we have mentioned how it's been a little bit warmer here since we've come down to the southern part of Croatia. And that's actually okay when you're in these little towns because the marble and everything keeps everything pretty cool. Like mm. you'll, it's pretty common to see a dog just like puddled out on the floor, just absorbing the coldness of the marble. And like, I kind of wish I could do that, but it just wouldn't really be socially okay, I don't think. Yeah, I think people are gonna look at you weird. <laughs> and um, then there's also just shade kind of everywhere because you're in these kind of cavernous little areas between these narrow walkways with these between these buildings and everything. So it's actually like, quite pleasant every time you get a little breeze and everything. I mean, maybe in the dead of summer it turns brutal, but for right now, it's actually quite nice. All right, we went to the store and we decided we were gonna get some booze. And what's cool about it is that they sell it in these little bottles that are like bigger than the little airplane bottles, but uh, still like a manageable size and they're kind of cheap. This is dangerous size, babe. This is where it's tricking you into thinking that you're only taking it easy, but really, you about to not remember. <laughs> okay. All right, well, I, mean, not, I don't plan on like chugging all three of them right at the moment, but um, we've got three different things, and from what we understand, all three of them are kind of local-ish types of things to drink. And uh, the one that Katie's holding right now is walnut, we think. And do you know how to pronounce <laughs> the name of the type of alcohol this is? Do you remember? Uh, Vochin, it's not, um, it's, oh, it's not, not Rakia. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not like their standard, not standard, but like the, their popular local Yeah, you know, local their brew. local homemade liquor. But when um, we went to the store, we Googled this stuff to make sure that it was like kind of local. And, yeah, so that's what you, so you just the, decided you're going walnut? Yeah, oh, okay. I'm going walnut. Um, um, this one is like their kind of ume shoe. Their, the, people will make this at home. They will put like something into a, a clear liquor. Yeah. and a whole bunch of sugar um, and I feel like that might be what's happening we're these, gonna we're these gonna things find are like out. in the 30 ish percent of strength oh, that smells amazing dude does it burn no that's the one so that's dangerous right mm. yeah that tastes a lot like uh, what we had when we had a very uh, 
Croatian meal in Zagreb. It's got a little bit of spice. It's yeah. not it's not super super it's not super strong in the attack like the burningness, but this will burn there. It's not it's not smooth like candy. Yeah, it's a like 10% burn. Yeah. 10% but it's pretty delicious. A little scary and then 80% delicious. <laughs> so yeah. the other two that are left, we've got a rum that is apparently like a locally produced rum and then we have got wormwood and it's we like think a, it's going to fall into like absinthe. absinthe and what's that other drink that's kind of like absinthe i can't remember i used to drink oh, pastis no, yeah pastis but there was also something else you add it to i can't remember what is it somebody will know oh but this is we're expecting to be like in a licorice flavor direction just based on the description yeah, yeah. we read but uh that's the one that i think is going to be the scariest i think that this was the one that was the good starter and then after yeah. this it won't be so scary anymore i guess it won't be <laughs> and i guess we won't remember whether it was scary or not <laughs> well that's why we're making a video <laughs> that's a bad that is bad news you should not be recording <laughs> this is an awesome little means of transportation that they use to move trash and stuff in and out of the city because the streets are too narrow and there's too many people walking around to like pull a regular car through here so it's this little electric machine <laughs> and it has a big thing in the back where you can put a bunch of stuff but the interesting thing is the way it's, it's driven and the way it works is that it works kind of like a tank where you've got these bars on the front and as you pull one of these it changes which direction the steering is pointed so the guy is like standing inside of it like this and he's like we got his arms around he pulls these up and down and the accelerator is just this little thing down here and there's no brake so it's just, I guess you let the accelerator off and the weight of it will slow it down. But I've never seen anything like this before. And it looks hella fun to drive when these people are scooting around. And every time I try to get a video of somebody in one, I can't because they just go by so fast that you just can't like get your camera out and hit the record button. <laughs> I almost got it. <laughs> Play the shit. Alright, it's been like, I don't know, 20 minutes or something? It has not been 20 minutes. It's been like at least 45 to an hour. Has it been that long? I stared at Airbnb for a really long time. And I went and I made the video about and the little And we made cart. friends with a small child. Yeah, their little kid came over and hung out with us. And that happened. <laughs> um, so now we're supposed to go over and get dinner. And I've convinced Eric that we should just jump into the deep end with the wormwood licorice. Uh, absinthe type thing. Right, there we go. Oh shit. Can you smell it? Yeah, it smells like plants, man. I don't really know what wormwood is. <laughs> I saw a bit. Ooh. It's green. Licorice. Did you mm. smell it? Or did you taste it? I smelled it oh, and okay. it's just got a really big licorice smell. Alright. And this one is 31%. <laughs> Somewhere between like <laughs> dental and cleaning. Yeah, it tastes like Listerine, dude. Yeah, you shouldn't drink. Yeah. Whoa. All right. We got another friend. <laughs> Kids apparently like, like to climb this. Like to run around this little thing. And and I didn't realize that this girl had come up and she was investigating us at first and then she realized she could climb all over this and yeah, we we became not as exciting as the podium for sure. Feels wrong to be drinking this Listerine with this little girl back here. <laughs> yeah. I think we might need to move away from the excitement for the children. <laughs> For dinner tonight, we have come to a little place that uh, seems pretty popular. We had to wait for about 20 or 30 minutes outside on a little bench. And it was kind of like being in Japan, waiting for a really good ramen restaurant. <laughs> and um, they give you the menu, and we had a look over the menu. And something that excited me, and this is going to sound crazy, but some of the things on the menu had been stroked off because they, had, they, had, they don't have those ingredients anymore. And that's an awesome sign to me because that means that they're using fresh ingredients. And they just look, we don't have any more of that ingredient anymore. That meal's gone. So you only have this stuff to choose from and to me I don't know that's just like that's a sign of somebody who cares more about presenting you with the right food than they do about just like churning out more and more meals for everybody so it's like their focus is on like quality as opposed to just profits so I don't know that's how I see it maybe it's just because I've been drinking but I don't know I thought the lady was bringing Katie's food but she's not a whole bunch of plates keep rolling in maybe Katie's food is coming yeah did you get a fish 
No? no. Okay, it's not Katie's bird. <laughs> so I've got some pasta and um, we're right by the ocean. So it's kind of fun that it has some little shrimps in it. And it is a pasta that is not like a heavy looking sauce. It looks like more of maybe an oil and uh, maybe a reddish type of sauce. I don't know. All it said was zucchini and, and uh, prawn. So. Ooh. Dude. Oh, dude. That's really good. So, the shrimp flavor is balanced. It's not like the whole thing is just like drenched in shrimpy, like oceanness. It's uh, a really, really, like the zucchini and the shrimp are dancing. And the, the pasta itself, the texture is really good. And I don't know, I ugh. This is really good. It's a bit more expensive than we usually spend on food, but um, yeah, I mean, I think in this case it's paying off, and what sold me was those crossed off menu items. It took me a long time to figure out what I was going to get, and I had to ask for advice. Um, we are in Dalmatia, and I want to know what is the Dalmatian cuisine, and you come to a hip restaurant like this, and it just says, like, rump steak. Is that Dalmatian? I don't know. So I told the girl basically like I'm kind of in this ballpark of money or less. If you want to go less, that's okay. Um, and we had landed on boiled beef and that sounded weird but interesting and she came back she said there's no more boiled beef she had to mark out all the menus no more boiled beef for anyone the next thing on the list that she said was the most dalmatian was veal and bean stew and beans here are peas i don't know if peas are beans are peas beans they're in a pod <laughs> it might be a bean. I don't know. So this is a kind of stew. It's not very watery. Your pasta is more watery than this stew is. But I, I'm loving what I'm looking at because I've got meat and greenery. So that makes me quite happy. Um, I don't know what I was going to say. I was going to say something, but it just went poof. I'm going to try what we've got. It's got like a mom's casserole feeling and now I remember exactly what I was going to talk about. She explained to me that when you're a little kid, your mom will tell you you're going to have this veal and bean stew and you don't want it. But when you're an adult, you do. This is fantastic tasting. It tastes like what you come home on a Wednesday night. Like mom's yelling out the window and it's time to eat dinner. This is what's on the table. And I'm pretty glad that she recommended this. It really tastes very homely. And the reason that we came to this restaurant was because we heard that it was a home cooked meal. And this is very home cooked to me. So that meal was amazing. And what hit it off for us was that it was like home cooked food. And that's so hard to find, we've realized when you're in places like, you're like, okay, when you eat like, you know, out, when you go to a new like country or whatever and they're like oh we eat this when we go out well what do you eat at home and it's very rarely the same things i agreed that the home cooking was a standout but yelena was my favorite part oh the waitress was really yeah nice. the waitress i asked her like lots of questions and she just answered all my questions very straightforward but that's again like that's like what we've that's just the croatian thing here yeah like, everybody's so really cool is. here and i i got the meal that i wanted i didn't want something that was just like i picked this off the menu i wanted to understand that this is like what down people in the Dalmatian region eat yeah. and uh, what children are sick of. I want to eat the things that children <laughs> yeah, are sick like of. What is it that, yeah, what it is that people are eating at home and I think that's really what we nailed down. We got what to have Americans, that. What are Americans kids eating that they're just tired of? Is this PB&J? No, they're not tired of that. Kids love Nobody's that stuff. Nobody's tired no, of it's like Brussels sprouts and stuff, right? Oh, Brussels sprouts. Look at it, get but me that's, some. That's the thing though. Like, If you live in a country and you want to open a restaurant, open a home cooked restaurant. Like whatever it is that you have. Like, right, eat, eat food for a month, write down everything you eat and then like, what do I eat the most? That's a menu item. Like, I would love to. I would love to try stuff like that. It's a panini. I'm, I'll get down I'm, a panini. I've never made a panini in my life. Why did I just say paninis? <laughs> I think I know why. You had too much of that wormwood. Nah, I was just thinking about like what machine would be the easiest to use. That's exactly the why. Machine? Yeah. I just microwave everything. 
Just put cheese and meat in between bread and grill it. It will be fantastic no matter what you I do. I used to make a lot of quesadillas. Yeah. That's basically that. <laughs> I think I got better footage of it. A little cart? Yeah, that's yeah, it's true. a little better. <laughs> and that kid almost got its hands chopped off. I don't know if I got that footage. <laughs> that's probably best. <laughs> this is a message to the people who play music at the Luxor here <laughs> in Split. Please stop. You're just butchering all the songs. They don't need to go like one something faster just like <laughs> let it chill if it's just red red wine like let it be red red wine like you're killing me it's true yeah so we've got one last bottle and it's <laughs> it's, it's the rum and uh i was surprised to see rum because like where's rum from that's like pirate stuff right like, it smells like candy can i smell it Ooh. It smells pretty nice, but we did look it up and apparently this brand is made like from like this place itch. We so. chose it because of this voluptuous broad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there <laughs> that, was one with another broad it. and she wasn't voluptuous. And so. Eric said, do you see any titties? And I said, <laughs> no. So that's why we got this one. <laughs> but the one, the other one did was a little darker in color. <clears throat> and we generally would go for a darker color, but in this case, I mean, you know, voluptuous voluptuousness. By the way, are you seeing this behind us? Like, this is the, the, the bell tower, and we're just, like, chilling here. This is amazing. It's And we're almost sitting by ourselves. Like, people walk by every few seconds or whatever, but we're away from the crowd, and no one is over here. It's just nice. These little, like, these little places like this, these little European old-school cities at nighttime are so cool. Mm. Like, it's so nice. Did you drink some of that? I did, and How it doesn't old? taste like candy. I'm holding my phone for a light and the camera with my other hand. You're gonna have to help a guy. Oh, this is dangerous. <laughs> oh. yeah. Whoa, that's really, really, those really good. Those titties be rocking. Yeah, man, those are rough voluptuousnesses. <laughs> rough, r r I can't put a rough lump, I can't do is that, it. Is that, you, you drink a lot more rum than I have. Where does that land in your rum world? I wouldn't want it again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would try the other lady. Is it better than the uh, the, the Wartworth or whatever? <laughs> the Wormwood? Yeah, Wormwood. Yeah. Yeah, it's better than the wormwood. All right, so most of these were were kind of. But but we should definitely just go back to the first. The first bottle. one with the walnuts. The first bottle was like, woo, yeah. <laughs> this is like. Now they're playing the Joker. This has gotta stop. Virginia beached all over my face. <laughs> Bronze Gate. Uh, The bronze gate actually goes into the substruct. The <laughs> is it? What, what's the difference between bronze and brass? <laughs> I don't know, dude. Oh it's kind of golden colored things. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. I'm gonna start over. <laughs> kind of golden colored things. That's scrotum, right? <laughs> scrotum. They're delicious. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed exploring Split with us. Next up on our Croatian adventure is a video about the little island of Vis. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. As always, thanks to our supporters at Patreon for making this video series possible. If you'd like to help us make more videos, check out the links to Patreon below. Liking and commenting on our videos also helps us out and is much appreciated. Thanks! <laughs>